don't fall. That's a nice dress. And don't get in over your boots. Here's another mature hive that didn't make it. Wasn't expecting that. I requeened them with a new late in the season. I guess they just didn't get big enough. Heavy hive, they've got a lot of honey in here, so it's good to find it now before it all spoils. I can definitely use the resources. So I just reduced this little nuke. They were tiny and I decided to get a real picture of what they look like, see if they're queen right. You see the aggregation behavior of pests and parasites. Those hive beetles are collecting in the weak colonies. And they're gonna bring them down. That's just ridiculous. To have that many beetles in February. And I think we'll call our loss on this one. I don't think they're gonna make it. So this hive's doing okay. I'm surprised I've got as many beetles in this yard as I do. I've seen a lot of beetles in here. This one's in full sun. It's uh, frustrating to say the least. Anyway, this hive is doing okay. Uh, they do have a lot of beetles too, but I'm wintering them on, uh, wintering them with one of these migratory lids. And I've mentioned that they, those stay a little wetter in my experience. Well, I also left some Swiffers on the edges and the Swiffers attracted water and this hive is just really wet. They're doing okay. Uh, they're strong enough that it's not killed them, but it's definitely not good for them. So I'm gonna swap that out with a inner cover and a telescopic lid and that'll dry them up. Should relieve some of that stress. So lesson learned pull that junk out before winter time won't do that again I guess this is be more of a carniolan type queen I've only got hybrid bees but I made this queen last year and I made her from a mother that winters with a relatively small cluster and builds up pretty quick in spring I keep a heavy hive I don't have to feed them and they have got a really heavy hive, a relatively small population, and they've just got a tiny little spot of brood right there. I hope they get big enough soon enough to do something. We'll see. They'll definitely make a honey crop. I just don't know if I'll be able to split them or not. I need splits, a lot of splits this year. Lots of splits. All right, so I just, finished opening up every hive um, pulled out all the dead outs all uh, pollen feeders dry pollen feeders are in every yard now and I fed the really light ones with fondant that was the the goal for the first inspection of the year I've lost eight colonies I went into winter with right at a hundred and about 80 of those were mature hives and I've lost two mature hives, which is about a two and a half percent loss rate. And then I had about 20 nukes, some of which were really small. Um, they were small enough that in a normal year, I wouldn't have tried to overwinter them. But I thought, well, it, you know, if there's a chance I can get that queen through to spring, I can equalize into them, boost them, and um, maybe get that queen going early enough, I can build them up to make a honey crop, or at least make a hive with them. And so I, I tried it and I lost uh, six of those 20. That's a 30% loss rate in my nukes. And they all died uh, after we hit negative 10 Fahrenheit. 
So losing eight colonies total out of 100, that's an 8% loss rate. That's acceptable. 2.5% uh, out of mature colonies is really good. 30% out of nukes is bad, but it is what it is. I, you know, I, I, I know what I did. I was trying to overwinter some I probably shouldn't have. And then we had a 30 or 40 year low temperature. Um, anyway, that leaves me with 90, 92, hopefully. Um, 78 good strong hives and you know, 12, 15, 20, 12 or 15 uh, mediums. So that won't get me to where I need to be. I, I was talking to Bob Benny and asked him, if I give you a good double deep coming out of winter, how many nukes can you make out of it and still get a honey crop? And he said that in a good year, you can make two nukes and those would be uh, pulling two deep brood frames and a food frame out for both. So you pull a total of four deep brood frames and two uh, frames of honey out of a double deep, make those two nukes, and then you can still make a honey crop with it. So if I'm able to pull two nukes out of say 60 of my 78 hives or 50 of my 78 hives, that gives me a hundred nukes. Um, I need to make probably 180, 190 nukes this year. And I'd be stretched to try to do that. You know, that would be more than doubling. So I'm gonna buy 32 single deeps and uh, try to get one split out of them and then put them into honey production. That should get me closer to where I need to be. I don't know that I'll get there totally this year, but I should get close. And I need to do everything early so that they can grow. I've been driving around uh, delivering honey today. It's February the 6th, and I've been looking at red maple trees along the side of the road, and it looks like they could be in bloom. And I talked to Bob this afternoon. He said that his bees started bringing in pollen today. So that's got me all excited. <laughs> the It looks like they could be in bloom, but are they? You know, I don't really know. So I stopped at a bee yard to see. And uh, they're bringing in something. I'm trying to figure out if it's maple pollen or if it's the dry ultra bee I put out. This little girl just landed on me. That looks like a different color than Ultra Bee. I'll check the feeder here in a minute. But, um, I'm gonna predict that maple started. Oh, don't sting me now. I'm not bothering you. I'm not bothering you. <laughs> don't sting me in the head. I am not bothering you. Pollen feeders got no activity. So yeah, they're bringing in maple. February 7th, the red maple in my yard is not quite in bloom yet, but this one has got some flowers blooming. Got daffodils in this little secluded hollow. Can you find some more, Daddy? On February 14th, so we're picking some for Mama. Stop with the bees. Hey, that's my birthday. No, tomorrow's your birthday. And the morning. Yep. I can wait until my birthday. It's in the morning. I take long stems. So it is February 15th. Happy Valentine's Day to everybody. It's my daughter's birthday. And we've got weather to do some hive inspections. So went around last week or 10 days ago or something, just weighed everybody, made sure we had enough weight. And now I'm actually cracking open some boxes, looking at population's weight, seeing if they're bringing in uh, pollen and whatnot. 
So this hive still got some weight in the top box. They are up in the top. I see honey frames on the outside of the second. Looks like we have just started putting in drone brood. Just barely started. So from the time you see lots of drone brood going in, it's generally about five weeks until swarm season. And that also sorts of set, sort of sets my calendar on queen rearing. And queen rearing sets my calendar on splitting. So we've got brood up here in the top box. They have moved up completely. I bet this bottom box is gonna be just about empty comb. So I'll probably do a reversal on them. Just set the empty comb up on top. Nice sight right there for this early in the season. Big fat queen that I made last year. Doing awesome. There's some hen bed or dead nettle falling right there. That maroon or deep red. That's what that is. I've got to move this hive out of my drone flooding yards because they have an attitude. They got a red pin for that. They've also got drone brood the most drone brood I've seen so far and they don't have much. We're working on it though. Five weeks, five to six, I'd say. Thought it'd take a second to go over what I'm doing in the bee yard, tools I'm needing. Uh, Bee brush, of course. I'm having to pull some frames out of hives and I want to brush the bees off. I've got a brood hauler box. Uh, this one, it's got a spacer on the bottom with a feed rim to give it some extra depth. And then it's got number eight mesh stapled to the bottom. I've just got extra frames in here right now. These are actually coal frames. That's one big thing I'm doing get frames that um, you stuck in and the bees drew the frame next to it out and they're too fat and then they don't draw these well and uh, just all sorts of stuff wonky stuff I pull a lot of that out this time of year and if you get those fat frames it really does help to take an uncapping knife with you you can just thin those frames down in the field Stick them back in, put a drawn comb next to them, evens everything out. I've got boxes of drawn comb here. I've got a couple boxes of drone comb. I've got some feed shims, some fondant, of course smoker. I've got empty boxes to swap out any that have got bad corners, rot or issues. And then in these empty boxes, I've got feeders because I want every hive to have a feeder. And I do have some feeders out that I don't like. And I'm swapping those out as I go. This is the low population point of the year. Um, so it just makes sense to do this housekeeping stuff now. Um, I've also got a paint marker to mark my queens because this is the easiest time of year to find them in mature hives. So if I happen to see one, I want to build a marker. And just... A lot of little things like this, it makes it a whole lot more efficient if you can just do everything you need to when you get into this hive. More housekeeping work, you pop these boxes and they got burr comb in between the bars. Go ahead and clean that off. Any bridge comb in between the frames, I try to knock that off. Let's get the boxes in shape so I can open and close these things easy. It's easier to do it right now than it will be later. I don't want you taking pictures. I'm not taking pictures. Why do you have your phone out like that? Oh, there's no reason for that. Let so, uh... Let me see the phone. No, no. I, I'm, I'm videoing you. No, you're not. No, read. Read. I don't... This is embarrassing right now. 
it's not embarrassing. Everybody falls in the pond every now and then. Now, tell me what you were doing. I was on a branch that was in the pond. Climbing on it? Yeah. And it was probably rotten. And no, I just fell in. You just fell in? It didn't break on you? No. Did you learn anything? Yeah, I need to go to the Never you, you don't need to climb on branches over the pond anymore. Run on to the house and get changed. Leave your boots outside. Put your wet clothes in the hamper. So it's February the 20th. That puts us at right around 10 weeks to the honey flow. Uh, if the honey flow starts, you know, last of April, 1st of May. And I've made it through my home yard, which is kicking. I mean, it's doing good. Got several hives out there that are putting in drone brood. And I thought that would be the case everywhere. But I got to this yard, which is at a little higher elevation and more hardwood area. And uh, boy, they're small. I've been through three so far. I've reduced two of them. That one's a yellow queen. So you know it is what it is she's old uh that one is a red dot queen they're just small small through here i guess the the pollen flow is just getting started but these bees look like they're at least two weeks behind my my yard at home so um i mean they're just starting to brood so i'm giving them a little bit of syrup just a little bit making sure they've got some enough food enough empty comb get going we'll get through the rest of the yard and see how they're doing this small nuke uh the queen has made it they're queen right and laying they've got like one frame of bees in there so i'm gonna see if i can boost them with um, somebody surely all these nukes were made last year so um those got one year old queens in them some of them should be a lot bigger i ought to be able to rob some resources from them my goals are pretty simple at this time of year. It's housekeeping. I'm trying to bring up the bottom end. And if I've got any that are too big, I'm trying to skim a little off of them, do some light equalizing. You know, the ones that have got the small nukes that have got queens that are, are good, but they're just too small. I'll boost them up. Just trying to get everybody uh, viable and growing at this point in the season. So I mentioned that it's February 20th and we're about 10 weeks to the honey flow. I'm trying to do a better job of stating things like that this year because there's a good reason for it. Bob Benny always says that a colony, four frames of bees in the spring will peak in seven to eight weeks. Now he's clarified to me personally that he means bees and brood. So that'd be, you know, two or two and a half frames of brood with four frames of bees. That's a good nuke, you know, a good five frame deep nuke. That will peak in seven to eight weeks. Another rule of thumb is that if a colony peaks before you hit the main honey flow, the swarming pressure goes way up. The likelihood that it's gonna swarm is much, much higher. So, there's a linear growth curve where you're trying to figure out how to get this hive to peak just after the main honey flow starts. And I was digging around on Randy Oliver's website and he wrote a series of articles for ABJ in 2015 about colony growth. And he put a chart in there. that's like a linear growth chart and it matches up exactly with what bob said it says that four frames of bees will become 20 frames of bees in eight weeks it also talks about um, you know the starting frames and has different metrics and stuff like if you want to start a nuke with a, a mated queen six weeks before the honey flow it tells you how many frames you need to start it with so that it'll peak at 20 frames right as the honey flow starts um, that's all really really useful uh, knowing how quickly a hive is going to progress, when they're going to peak, when your honey flow starts, how much time you've got makes a world of difference. So that little hive and this little hive here have June queens in them. They mated right around the summer solstice. 
So they've not been a they've not been through a spring buildup. These are like brand new queens. And not only that, they're better than a brand new queen because they're mature. They've overwintered. And you can see in this little nuke, I've got, this, this, I use mediums, but I've got uh, bees on one, two, three, four, say four frames, four medium frames. That's going to be about three deeps. So um, this hive is probably going to peak in nine to 10 weeks. I'm 10 weeks before the honey flow. You know, my black locust will kick in the last week of April and then uh, tulip poplar generally will kick in about May 1st. So I may not have to do anything to this hive except give it a little bit of feed, a little bit of simulation and drawn comb, obviously. They need drawn comb. But by the time they're filling out three boxes, the honey flow is going to start and I can just put them into production. I probably won't get a split out of them, almost assuredly won't, and I may have to boost them just a little bit. Um, but, you know, you figure if they're going to peak in nine to ten weeks, I'm ten weeks away from the honey flow. This is not a bad size to have right now, uh, as long as they can get through the weather and continue to build, they're right on track. Same deal with this hive. This one's actually a little bit smaller than this one. Same good queen, um, same situation. And I, I may have to boost them, but I won't have to pull them back at all. And they should be right on track to make a honey crop. Now, some of my bigger hives, a big mature hive coming out of spring or coming out of winter will take about six weeks to build up. And I'll post a link to that chart, that article on... Um, in a comment i'll pin a comment with that article on there so you guys can read it but this one will take about six weeks and we're 10 weeks to the honey flow so i'm gonna have to split these mature colonies you know there's there's not really a good chance of me taking them into the honey flow without them trying to swarm on me without pulling them back equalizing out of them pulling brood away from them or some manipulation that um, will prevent them from swarming